Et maintenant, il a fait le requin pour tout le gratin, musicien de studio, mais jamais vraiment solo. Voici Chris Pelling qui dit tout au oh, Ouzou. Chris Pelling, if all the albums on which you've been playing guitar were suddenly to disappear, our shelves at home would be rather empty, no? Don't you think so? Probably so, yeah. Yeah. From the late 60s until the 80s, you've been this session guitarist in the world, no? On how many albums have you been playing? Sometimes I discover when people come yeah. to a gig and ask me to sign an autograph. I, I haven't yeah. seen this one before, I don't remember this one. You know? yeah. you Sometimes I forget. You really, you really don't know? Sometimes I forget, you know, if I just went and did one day overdub, mm. I go away and I forget all about it. Yeah. And then somebody asked me to sign the autograph. Yeah. You made several albums as a solo artist. Yep. The best and the much known is uh, called Chris Speeding. Yeah. And the best cool. number is Guitar Jamboree, where you oh. play like every guitar hero in the world. Uh, yeah. Aren't you too chameleon to, to be a really great solo artist? Uh, aren't you too gifted? I don't know. Um, that, um, that track was just like a tongue-in-cheek thing, you know, like people think of me as being a, a, a guitar hero, like uh, the show off on the yeah. guitar, mm -hmm. which I don't really like to do. Yeah. So I, I conceived that number to show off in a humorous sort of way, you know, yeah. to show off and have fun at the same time. My, my, so I enjoyed it, you know. And meanwhile, people that like to see some fancy guitar playing, they get, they get satisfied and I get satisfied. Mm. That was the only way I could do it, mm. you know. Did you suffer from the plug me anywhere approach of guitar? I always found that the more people I play with, the more I would get, I would get just as much out of playing with different people. Because mm. you can stagnate if you don't mm. play with different people. Mm. And I think every major good artist that I've played with, mm. I've become better myself as a result. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we will do a Woos Woo interview. Roger Daltrey. Oh yeah, that was, I went, I was living in America and I was asked to come over to England to do that album. Uh, that was fun to do, you know. It was just like a project, somebody calls you up to do the thing. Yeah. That, that was kind of like a craftsman type thing, it wasn't like, I see things like with Brian Ferry and with John Cale as being more of an artistic uh, collaboration. Yeah. But the, the Roger Daltrey thing was more of a craftsmanship one, you know? Donovan, you've been playing with Donovan. Donovan was interesting for me because it's the only time that anybody has ever asked me to write string charts. Yeah. You know, all the orchestra and stuff. Yeah. And I was sitting there conducting. I never did that before. And that was interesting for that. Brian Eno? Uh, Brian Eno, okay. Um, we toured with supporting Roxy Music in the show when I was in the Sharks, and that's how we got to know Brian Eno. It was a Country Life album with Roxy Music, and we got to know Brian Eno, and he, we liked each other. And when he did his solo album, They Come the Warm Jets, we, um, we were hanging out, we were sort of kind of friends, you know. Brian Ferry? Well, I've already mentioned Brian. He's one of my favorite artists that I've worked with. It was very clever the way that he was able to bring out of me something that I didn't even know was there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Johnny Hallyday? Oh, uh, that was a strange project in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, where was it? Uh, Canada. So where was it? Yeah. Uh, it was in Canada? No. Montreal. Mm -hmm. uh, it was fun, you know, up to a point. It was just another craftsmanship thing, you know? <laughs> Elton John. There again, I was, I was like an orchestra, Paul Buckmaster's orchestra. It was yeah. uh, Madman Across the Water. Uh, it was just about two days in the studio. I don't really remember too much about it. Paul McCartney? Oh, Paul McCartney was interesting. That, I like. The most interesting thing about that was when you're making movies, it's really boring. You have to have long waits between takes yeah. when you all sit in the Winnebago, the mm -hmm. van, you know? But what was interesting about Paul McCartney movie was we never, during the breaks, mm -hmm. when they were resetting the lighting, mm -hmm. we were jamming old rock and roll tunes. Yeah. So I think the most interesting thing about that movie was the thing that was not on the movie. <laughs> yeah. So all the camera crew and all the, the technicians were all standing by while yeah. they had a free jam, yeah. you know, with Dave Edmonds and John Ringo and everything, but we were all jamming away. And I always 
think that maybe they should have that was they should have recorded yeah. that and yeah. filmed that yeah. instead of what you know that was great and the sex pistols well i didn't actually play on the sex pistols see a lot of people think i played on the sex no pistols, you've been helping them for the I, demo I recorded, tapes you know yeah, yeah i recorded their demos yeah I got them the deal yeah. and yeah. i introduced the sex pistols to chris yeah. thomas the producer yeah. yeah so that was my involvement with them mm -hmm. uh if like I think people always thought the Sex Pistols couldn't play. Yeah. And when the records came out, the records yeah. were great. Yeah. They said, oh, it can't be them, it must be spreading. <laughs> you know? But in actual fact, I would not have been interested in the When group. we listen to good guitar, we think it's you playing, you know? Well, That's the problem. Yeah, but I wouldn't have been interested in the yeah. group mm. if they couldn't play. Mm. I was only interested in them because I thought they could play. Yeah. You know? so. But you've been playing with the vibrators, no? Oh, yeah, I, was, I used them as my backup group. Yeah. You know, I thought they were good. Yeah. They, you know, mm. What do you think of the evolution of rock and roll? Because you've been involved since uh, the late uh, 60s until the vibrators. Yeah. Until now. What do you think the way evolution? People in the music industry, before rock and roll, they were looking for the new Frank Sinatra or yeah. the new Bing Crosby. Yeah. And Elvis Presley comes along and nobody yeah. sees it. And like everybody is looking for the new Elvis Presley and they miss the Beatles. Everybody yeah. looks for the new Beatles yeah. and they mix, miss the Sex Pistols. Yeah. And I can never understand that. Who was the greatest ever? The greatest ever? Yeah. Well, you see, like, my generation, Yeah. I was first turned on by the Elvis Presley when he was... Yeah. When he was, like... When you were 13, When yeah. he was 20 yeah. years old, you know, and yeah. he, looked, he looked great. When you were in Sheffield, when you not, were 13? Not the, El the fat Elvis with the yeah. white suit. Yeah. The Elvis Presley with the, uh, you know, on the Ed Sullivan show. The early Presley. Yeah. yeah, Hound Dog and Don't Be yeah. Cool and stuff yeah. like that. That was my original, uh, my, my original turn on. So I'm prejudiced, you know, I was very impressed by that because I was 13 years old you know I was playing the violin in the school orchestra I'd never yeah. heard rock and roll before yeah. you know and I freaked out from you 9 know. to 13 you, you've been yeah. playing violin and I throw the violin away on a guitar you know yeah. when you are Presley yeah yeah et pour être sûr de ne rien rater de Inarditube abonnez-vous et mettez un pouce bleu